So tonight I'd like to do a quick video on pressure volume loops. This is a concept uh, that can be used to explain uh, cardiac physiology and the pathophysiology behind a number of cardiac diseases, in particular valvular lesions and um, the sequelae of congestive heart failure. So there'll be a series of videos on these, but tonight we'll start with the normal pressure volume loop. Um, we've all seen this graph before, and essentially it's pressure on the y-axis and volume on the x-axis. And when you describe this, it's it's helpful just to, to start with a, a particular corner. The way I like to think of it, I I start with when the mitral valve opens. So uh, when the heart is fully relaxed in diastole, it's after the start of diastole, it's in the middle of diastole. When the heart is relaxed, the mitral valve opens and it starts filling. So I like to just put this point here. So the mitral valve will open when the left atrial pressure is greater than the left ventricular pressure. I should say this is the pressure of the left ventricle that we're measuring here. So when this mitral valve opens, Blood will, of course, flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle, increasing the volume in the left ventricle. Now, it's mostly flat, but then you get a slow uptick in pressure as the ventricle fills until you reach the end of diastole and the impulse conduction in the um, cardiac conduction system results in contraction of the left ventricle. And so you, and when that pressure inside the left ventricle reaches the threshold above which it's greater than the left pressure in the left atrium, that mitral valve will close. Now, there's a period of time here where the pressure in the left ventricle is still not greater than the pressure in the aorta, and so the, the aortic valve is still closed, as is the mitral valve. So the volume of the ventricle, when both valves are closed, is not changing, and you get an increase in pressure as the ventricle contracts. You can imagine uh, a fixed space, the pressure inside getting greater uh, as whatever's inside is squeezed. And so you get a period of what's called isovolumetric contraction here uh, to this point. And so this is called isovolumetric contraction. To the point where the pressure in the left ventricle is now greater than the pressure in the aorta, so the aortic valve will open. And now with the aortic valve open and the mitral valve closed, you're going to get a decrease in volume. And this pressure, sorry, I've kind of gone off my page here, this pressure does actually get a bit higher in the left ventricle as it continues, the muscle continues to squeeze. But it eventually re reaches a point where all that volume is gone, and we're now at, um, and we're now, the ventricle is starting to relax as that contraction peters out, and the pressure in the left ventricle is going to be lower than it is in the aorta, and at which that point the aortic valve is going to close. But at this point, the pressure in our left ventricle is still significantly higher than it is in the left atrium. As a result, the mitral valve is still going to be closed. And again, as we remember from this side of the, of the curve, when both valves are closed, the volume in the ventricle cannot change as a result. Uh, but the, the ventricle is relaxing and the pressure is decreasing. So you get a period of isovolumetric relaxation. As in, the volume is not changing, but the pressure is changing. Pressure is dropping significantly. Isovolumetric relaxation. So there's two important points on this curve that are helpful to know. This point here represents the end of diastole. And because, and we can look at the volume here, this point represents the end diastolic volume, which is essentially analogous to your preload. It's the volume that the ventricle fills with. So it's your filling, it's your filling volume or your preload. And this corner up here 
is the end of the volume in the left ventricle at the end of systole after the contraction is done and relaxation starts. So this is your end systolic volume. which gives you actually a fairly important number. So the difference between these two, the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume, is going to be your stroke volume. So you can see, if you find ways of increasing your end uh, diastolic volume, decreasing your end systolic volume, you can increase or alter your stroke volume. And we'll see in subsequent videos how stroke volume is affected by um, various forces uh, that are acting uh, that can be described by pressure volume.